Okay, so welcome back. We're gonna do a little bit more on the spindle. First thing I wanna address is, some of you may have noticed, I didn't see anything in the comments as yet, but I forgot to release the drawbar circlip whilst it was in the machine. The procedure for removing the drawbar is you put a tool in, you remove the tool release piston, you remove the circlip. Once the circlip is removed, put it to one side, put the tool release piston back in the assembly. Then do a tool release, remove the tool from the drawbar, and then obviously the clip's not in there and you can pull the drawbar assembly out. Now I forgot to do that. Uh, I'm not putting it back in the machine for that. So we're just gonna put it on the press because obviously there's set amount of pressure. I don't know if it's between like 800 and 1500 pounds of pressure. I think it says on the HAS manual is meant to be pulling up on the tool. So what I'm gonna do is put it in the arbor press here. Now I've just got it sitting just outside the spindle. So it's not actually touching, it's just on the case. Now I'm gonna go and get a tool. And what I'll do is I'll put the tool in whilst pulling down on the handle here to allow me to get the tool in and that should work without no issues. So I'll just grab a tool, just an empty holder. If I line that up there, that should. There you go, simple as that. Okay, so I've got these tools. This is like a little watch screwdriver, mini screwdriver set, and then a bigger flathead. And now you can see just on the nose of this clip, that it's just recessed back, just enough for you to get this in, and then ping it upwards with the other screwdriver. Now, I couldn't do it whilst filming because there just wasn't the room for my hands. If you had it on a bench, there'd be more room for me to film, but I've got it in this press and I haven't got anything tall enough to stand it on the table to give the clearance for the tool holder. So I had to do that off camera, but it's fiddly removing the clip and now you can see I can sort of go around and peel the clip out of the recess there until it's all the way out. And there's your clip. Now, unless that's damaged, it shouldn't have to be replaced. That should be good. Just make sure you don't lose it. So. I'm going to put it to one side with everything else. Now what I should be able to do is now camera back there. I'll now compress this down again and remove the tongue. Easy enough, take the tool holder out. If you did that in the machine, it would probably be a bit easier. As you can see, if you do forget, don't worry, it can be done. So what I'll do now is I'll get this put on the bench so we can have a look at the top and look at getting this drawbar taken out. Okay, so apologies for that noise. This is compressors running, as usual. Um, now we've got that circlip out off the end for the drawbar. Now what we need to do is pull the drawbar out. Now there's nothing on the end of the drawbar that you can really, you certainly can't grab hold of it. So you want to get a small bit of rod, um, aluminium, brass, anything soft. Place it inside the spindle, just use a torch. And put the rod in between where the pull stud goes, as long as it clears the balls off the pull stud. And then just gonna right, it's moving quite easily. I've never taken one of these out, so I've never seen it like that. Get an old rag. See now I can just push that. Just, oh, there go 
there's one. Right, so we just dropped one of the balls. There you can see the drawbar. It's nicely greased up, so I don't think it's that old, to be fair. None of the springs look damaged, so that looks good. But I need to um, find the ball that I dropped. So three of them have come out there. Let's just put them in something. So there's three there, one still in it. And I dropped one. So I'm gonna go find that one while I know where it went. Okay. So this is the drawbar removed from the spindle. You can see all the washers there. They're coated in grease, which is good. And I would say that this isn't that old. Now, I've got no history, or well, the fellow I got the machine from didn't mention the drawbar was changed. But all them, they're called Belleville washers which create your um, tension for the drawbar. They feel good, and when I was pulling it down on the press to put the tool in myself, it feels good. Now, these are the five balls. Obviously, I dropped one on the floor. You don't want to lose them. Now, I'm just gonna wrap all that up in some bubble wrap, because I don't want to put it in a, one of my towels and get covered in odds and sods from the towel. So I'm gonna put that to one side, because that's gonna be, um, going back in and then yeah there we've got our spindle now you can see somebody's had this off in the past because they've marked it all up so whether it just wasn't done properly inside or something's failed obviously I'm going to find out soon but yeah you've got your punch marks there so this cap I'm guessing can come undone and then this can slide out, but I would obviously the pulley's gonna have to come off first, but listen to that. Doesn't sound the greatest. Let's um while I've just put the camera down. Just put that there a second while I stand this back up on the wood. Right, so we're gonna use the parallels. Just go. Now the bearings up, you can see that it's a uh, doesn't sound as bad as it did on its side, which says to me that it's definitely got play in there. So I need to know how to remove this pulley. Now I'm not sure how that gets done, but you've got threaded, you've got these two threaded holes These two threaded holes, which go all the way through to the bottom. So I'm guessing you can put bolts in there and actually jack this off. So it lifts it up by tightening the bolts bit by bit. So I'm gonna work out what thread sizes they are. Now they're bound to be imperial, so I may not have long enough bolts to do that, but I'll go see what I can find and I'll come back and we'll go from there. So we've gone and got an old chunk of um, just mild steel flat, drilled a couple of holes in it, put the um, mini machine hold down kit studs all the way through into there, which are the half 13 UNC. Obviously we haven't gone down there, and what we're doing is we're just warring them up with a nut gun, bit by bit, and it's moving. You can see we've got a much bigger gap there now. 
which is doing one side at a time. as I can get off of there and then what we'll have to do you can see we're definitely moving and it's not stretched these threads at all so that's worked perfect I'll just need to make myself a spacer up now that sits in there nicely just an alley spacer and goes right out to that OD of that shaft as best I can um, so I don't want it just on the inside lip because I don't want to crush that groove for the drawbar circuit. So I'll go make myself a little top hat for that. We'll come back and we'll carry on raising it up bit by bit and we'll show you when we're finally getting it off. Okay, so we've got a spacer in there now. Um, it's not the best way, but I don't know how bad the alley, whether it will crush, but this is a solid bit of alley turned down to fit nicely inside the bore. And obviously you can see it's just smaller than the um, OD of the shaft there. So it should pull up over that. And it is about four mil longer than the pulley. Now we're gonna to have to change the stud lengths because I'm gonna bottom out the, um, the nut on there. But it was working. So that's what we're gonna go for. Let me just try and balance the camera there and we'll see if we can keep this moving. to get this removed and there we go one pulley There's the spacer, at least the shaft perfect with no damage. Take the phone out. So yeah, there we have the end of the spindle shaft. You can see where we tried to jack the screws just on that, that bit. It makes a, um, a bit of a mess. So the next thing will be to undo these four bolts just off of this oiler block. This is purely for the air oil mist you can see in there there's like a little filter like a little stone filter you get in the oil lube system now I'll get these studs out of here now this one has actually pulled right through so I reckon I might have to lob that off that might be a bit of an issue on there but we can worry about that later on um, so yeah we'll get that lot undone we we'll clean all the crap off up here um, and then we'll undo these and we'll have a look in there. So, bit of a mission, to be fair. Um, them studs did really well. I should have watched that to see if that was actually pulling through there because that's going to cause me a bit of grief getting that out now. But I'm sure we can, we can work something out with that later because again, um, if the spindle has to be sent away, they will sort that issue out anyway. I'll get it out and I'll just send it to them with the pulley already off. So it isn't any real dramas, you know. I've not, um, it's not like it was a good spindle and I'm now investigating it for fun and ruined anything. It's obviously shot anyway. So yeah, we'll get that taken apart. We'll get this cleaned up, we'll undo that and I'll bring you back and we'll have a look inside. 
Okay, so we've got the spindle back on the bench. Now, this is the oiler ring. I've already unbolted it. So if you're watching me cleaning out the bolt holes. So this is just the collar with the oiler in it. And you can see there, it's got like one of them bronze filters. So the air and oil mist comes in here and I'm guessing just weeps out of that. It drips down into the edge of the bearings in here. I'll put this to one side and I'll just grab the camera and a torch to show you in here. Now, there's nothing immediately obvious as to um, what's wrong. Obviously, we already know it sounds rough, but there's nothing immediately obvious to me of why there's play up and down. So what I'm going to do now is lay it on its side, take this nose cap off, and see if we can pull the entire finger assembly out. I'm hoping once this nose cap's off, it'll all just uh, come out relatively easy. He says. Now, I'm having a look into this. Obviously, I don't know what's going to happen with this spindle yet. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm hoping that the one off this VF0E, which is turning up tomorrow, um, lunchtime, something like that. I'm hoping when I take that part, that I find out that it's the same spindle. Because I got a price from somebody today to rebuild this spindle. And it's £2,850 plus that. Yeah, that was for um, pushing the rear bearing housing, which is, they said, they give you the worst price um, scenario, the highest price scenario, and that was for re-bushing the rear bearing housing, um, re-grinding the spindle taper, and repairing the dogs. Now, the dogs are pretty good on this. The taper is actually quite nice. I don't know what it's like if you've like, air test it or whatever it is they do. Um, but that was the price, £2,850. So I really do hope that the other one has a good spindle because I just can't afford that right now. It's too much money. For me. Let's get copper mallet and see if we can tap this out. Now there's nothing else sort of holding in there. in there, but it's the seven degrees, but everything just stinks of the cast iron that the machine was being used for. about this. So let's lay that down there. 
You've got the empty housing in there. You can see on the walls, there's a lot of cast iron. Five inches. I say five inches, just swap. Like that there. It literally feels like sand. I'd love to portray the feel of that that's in there. Um, so let's just put this out of the way over here. Rest that on there. organize myself very well here. Okay. Let's uh, take you off the stand and have a little look here. So, you can see on here how bad that is the stuff that's got through here. Obviously in an ideal world you'd open this up and this would be super shiny. Everything would be clean. Now, this collar here from, again I'm no expert, I've just had a read up. Um, had a look at the diagram on the Haas manual. This collar here, that is a shrink fit, that presses over this and obviously clamps your two bearings together on the inner and outer spacer. I don't think it should be that loose. I think this maybe has moved, possibly. Um, because it is kind of tough in there. Now I wonder if, I don't know, if the shaft is moving in these bearings. Now you can see there that I'm going to put you back on the stand to hopefully show you that little tester there. Get you a bit closer if you can. That's as low as my little tripod can go. Right. I don't know if that portrays on camera, but all them bearings move. I'm guessing. That should not be the case. Yeah, and I can create there. Let me just show you here. I can do it without taking the camera out of the stand, which I'm not going to be able to. Apologies about this. Uh, one day I'll get a better setup. So you can see there that I can lift that bearing up and create the gap. You can just see through the edge. If you look just between the two there, my unsteady hand, I'm afraid, I can create quite a gap um, through that assembly. Now, I'm curious as to whether it's just because this collar has moved or whether it's because something in the whole bearing, you know, whether they're just worn out, claps or whatever, you know, I don't know, I, I, I must admit, I don't know. Um, I might put that in the press and see if I can push down on that a little bit and see if it seeks. Just that curiosity because there's nothing I can do with this spindle really. Again, you can look down here and just sort of see. It's not going to focus in on it. I think because I've got black gloves on, let me just try and 
take the guts off the second. And then maybe get it to focus a little bit better. He says, but no, it doesn't focus anyway. It's just grit. It's just like sand. It's chewed the bearings up and that's the end of them. Um, yeah, so not much more I could show you at the minute. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I don't know. Um, I don't know anything until the other machine comes up and I can drop the spindle out. I really hope, as I said before, I really do hope that I can swap the spindle out of the spares machine onto that just to get me going because getting the machine running, doing the repairs, fixing the vector drive, buying the spare machine for the spare vector drive is kind of done with the minute and I need to get some work um, going on the machine to be able to pay for stuff like this. And I've been doing this four years now um, since I've left my day job, not just the machining and the welding and getting myself set up. I've only had the CNC machines for two years, I think. Um, but it's very difficult. CNC machining is expensive. And when you run a machine, and realistically, I bought a 1997 machine and a 19, no, year 2000 machine, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel with the CNC machine, especially if you're trying to do it day to day. You know, these machines are really old. And it's hard because every time you earn some money, something breaks and you spend all the money you just earned when you're trying to put behind you, so it's difficult. Um, big companies have the same issue, except you've got more turnover. Um, so you can repair things quicker, maybe if you've got production mode. But I can't afford to repair this right now. Um, so my two options are swap the spindle if they're the same. That would be brilliant because it's just one in, one out. The other thing I'm going to try and do is if this collar has become unloaded from here and I can push it back together, I'll throw it back in the machine. Now, the bearing sounded rough, we know that, but when the machine was running, I can live with that, you know? I know the bearings are bad, so I've got no real dramas. If it seizes up one day, it seizes up, it's going to be no worse than what it is now. So, I'm going to see if I can preload this again, just wash that back on, clean everything up, clean all the, uh, oil all these bearings and get everything out of it as best I can. And that's my second port of call, just to fall back. I didn't want to anything down with the top. I wanted to see the numbers on the bearings. So, I had another look here, and I, I don't think this movement is down to this um, collar, which creates the preload moving. I just think they're worn out. Um, now, because this spacer moves in and out, I managed to Look down there, you can see it says England, X, and then you've got XL 209255B, NSK, the make of the bearing, it says dash 4. And then a little bit further around, we've got the part number. And the part number, 7012 CTR, and then I think that's DULP3. And that's all that's on there and then your background to the start again. So yeah, I've wrote that down. So it's NSK 7012-CTR-DULP3-4-XL209-255B England X. Now I've looked this up online in the UK and there's one company um, that sells a matched pair of these bearings for about 300 pound plus back 
which to me sounds really cheap to be fair, almost too cheap. Um, now obviously you can see this spindle has been a part in the past. Now has somebody just put a cheap set of bearings in to get them up and running? Um, I don't know if NSK would have been the ones from the factory, but maybe because the, um, the gearbox that had all NSK uh, bearings in it, the tool changer had an NSK bearing in it. So potentially it is the ones from the factory or the ones that a lot of companies will use, I'm not too sure. But at that sort of price, it's not crazy expensive to buy it. As I mentioned earlier when I was sort of removing the pulley, a company quoted, um, sorry when I was here, a company quoted £2,850. Now, you're getting a lot more than just your bearings for that, don't get me wrong, you're getting a taper grind, um, you're getting the back bearing bushed and sleeved or something they said. You know, it's going to be a pucker job, it's going to be balanced, it's going to come back and you, you've got no qualms, no issues, that's going to be perfect. But, as I mentioned, I can't afford that right now. So, I'm contemplating 300 pounds for bearings. If that other spindle is in a direct swap, I'm going to clean all this up. Buy the 300 pound bearings. Buy whatever bearing is on the support here. But where these two are facing each other without a um, spacer in between, I can't read the part number off these. But if they're 300, let's say they're 100, 200, but these ones feel good. Obviously, we've got to take them off anyway, so they'd have to be replaced. Um, but even though they're a cheaper bearing, if you're not having all that cast iron going there anymore, all that cast iron dust and everything like that, and potential must have been water in the air system or something to be that grotty inside, um, maybe I could do this myself for around 500 pounds. I don't think it needs a taper grind. Um, it's going to be difficult to show you in there. I'll try and get a bit of light in there. Yeah, I'm not saying it's the greatest by any means, but it's better than my other machine. Um, yeah, it feels better than the VF08. The dogs are okay. They've got a few marks on them, but in general, the dogs are good. They're not destroyed, they're not being crashed into anything too often by the look of it. So I think that's salvageable. Um, so yeah, we're going to go from there, we're going to see what happens, we'll see what this spindle looks like that comes on the other machine tomorrow. <coughs> Excuse me. If it is the same, that's going in there anyway. So this can be dealt with at a later date because um, e even if it requires a few hundred pound of bearings, 500 pound say of bearings, I don't want to do that right now, it's just before Christmas, money's tight sit to one side um, and be done at a later date. Again, there's a spare potentially for the project. So we'll leave it like that for now. I'll end the video there for the moment on this episode. I will bring you back for another video to show you the spares machine that's coming and to show you if the spindles are the same. So once again, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like the content and we'll see you again.